Welcome back to the class, everyone. Today we are back for another GC. And today we're up against what is probably the most anticipated match we've ever had. So a lot of you probably don't know this who are watching now, so I'll give them a little bit of an introduction. But our opponent here is Emo Kid Skills, and this is probably my longest in-game friend. We met years ago uh, through another mutual friend that was a guildmate of mine that was trying to connect me with some more competitive players. And Emo has, is, at one point, he's been my guild leader, and we've just been friends for a really long time. And, like, this is one of the few people that I go to when I look for advice in the game. Like, I'll, even some of my modding is based off of a lot of his characters. So he's a really, really, really good player. He's always been really heavily invested. Um, and, I mean, he's just a great guy. That's that's really what it, what it comes down to. So this match coming into it, and we'll talk a little bit about the matchup. But winning or losing, it's just really cool to go against someone we know so well. So I, emo, if you're watching this, I would be happy to lose to you. Like this is this is a great match. A little bummed it is happening three v three. So like I said, emo is a great player. He doesn't care as much for three v three as he does for five v five. So this match might not 100% reflect both of us. But anyways. So that's kind of who he is, who he is to me. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the stats for between the two of us. He does have a very end game account. Uh, that does come hand in hand with him being a very good player. But again, it varies, not, not just him, but very similar to most of the people that we're fighting against in this week or in this bracket. They just have pretty much everything. So coming back to him, he does have 500 relic levels on us, which is a whole lot. Uh, he's got, in the Omicron department, not a huge advantage. It's very similar. He has Starkiller and we don't, so that's a bummer for us. He has Rain, we don't. Uh, mods, he has us beat in a few categories. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, here's not even close. Six Tidings got us destroyed. Plus 10s, probably a wash. They're not super important. He does have us pretty beaten, plus 15s. Very good there. Um, and then he has beat us beaten plus 20s, and we have him beat just slightly in plus 25. So, really good mods. And also his placement on where they go is very very important so like i said really good player good roster not not too foreign of what we faced previously roster wise but um still very good but so going into the match he was kind enough uh to to attack before he has a weekend at the lake so kind of jealous of him in that respect so we, we weren't able to do like any simulate um simultaneous attacking or anything like that uh but that's that's fine that's a lot to ask um so our defense, he did do a really, really good job. He one-shot everything on the first wall except Darth Revan. He actually told me uh, that his fail there was with troopers. I don't know. He just didn't like get the right assist at the right time. And he tried to wait for a mass assist, and then it wasn't there, and it ended up costing him. One-shot everything back here as well except our CLS. He, he used JTR versus that. He went to ability block our Nubaka, and he got he got the ability block, but he didn't, he, he didn't get the days. So that cost him there, and then he one-shot everything else, including ships. So this is going to be a very, very, very tight match. He has he has two fails, and I typically, for me to get ships down, even without Executor on the back wall, I almost always have to use a burner with my Rebels for them to kill anything high-end. So I'm already looking at one fail. So I pretty much, I can't fail on ground. If, if we want a comfortable win, I have to one-shot everything you put down. If we fail on something then this is going to get really close really fast. I think we might have one fail in the bank. But he doesn't have any Galactic Legends up front. He does typically set a few, so they're probably in the back wall. But yeah, we're, we're going to have to play this really, really close to our chest with what he set down. Um, again, no Galactic Legends, but there are some very good teams. CLS is down there. The Boba team that we struggled with is down there. He's got Rex, uh, Fives, Barris, Hux team. Like, they're very standard teams, and we do... We do have the first order tie pilot on offense this round. So hopefully, hopefully that can come to our aid in a few situations. Maybe we actually use that on CLS, see how that goes. But let's go ahead and get to the battles, guys. All right, here come the battles. So first off, we have to get through this bottom wall and we have to do it at the same time, not using any of our Galactic Legends because I'm pretty sure he's going to have a few on the back wall. So we have to take down Aiden and we... We kind of learned our lesson from last time, I guess you could say, we, in regards to just committing, taking in Wampa, not trying to beat it with something weaker. We, it's, it's a counter that we know that was going to work, and we know that was going to be fine. And I really do, we made a video about this a while ago, but like which Omicrons kind of get better, or get worse through 3v3 and 5v5. And I really do believe that Omic, uh, that Aiden is one of the weird ones that has kind of just stayed the same. 
Like she's still there's very few things that can still beat her. Um, and they are quite honestly cost like Wampa. Wampa's a, an expensive ask for this team, but he gets into, down no problem. Even though that Iden was 154% potency, mind you. Um, so Evo has a fully protection mod and CLS, which is kind of nice for us because it won't be that fast. And we should just be able to loop it here with Bad Batch. We actually went through several teams of trying to figure out what we we're going to use against this. But I, they didn't have a lot of tenacity and they didn't have a lot of crit avoiding. So we landed all three stuns in the very beginning. So that right there was huge. And then we uh, we couldn't land any exposes on Nubaka. We, we ended up landing one on him, but we had really would have liked to land three just so we could cut through him. So we get back to the heal or the healing immunity in days. I'm like, they already have it. They're all about the cleanse. We don't have any buffs to riff off. We should probably just hold that. So we just end up go ahead, go ahead using basic on Nubaka there. And he, I mean, yeah, they cleanse everything. This is looking really bad. Luckily, our echo is super fast. He loops back around. We start to control them a little bit. Uh, keep using turns with echo. Go ahead and get uh, Nubaka stunned. Take him out. Decrease everything on CLS. Get the cleanse. And we're looking really good at potentially just ending this with full banners. So CLS didn't have his cleanse lined up. We... Yeah, there's really, I mean, there's nothing they can do at this point. Uh, once Nubaka was down and his bonuses were gone, the team was really, really easy. So props to Bad Batch for that easy win. Still making our way through the, fir the, the front wall. And we had trouble with this team last time too. And this is just the ultimately the team that we ended up taking it against it. Uh, it. It worked really stinking well the other time. I don't, I really don't, can't think of any reason why this team would ever really lose. They have everything they need. We go up to Zam first just to get rid of her bonuses. And also Boba has, there's two of him and dengar is he's stealth so it's just be best to get rid of zam first and he has this really fast fin fin po team the fin is 340 speed so i needed something that could get out, get ahead of that or just or at least would be reactionary to it and we didn't really have anything that was reactionary to it so we just took in this really really strong first order tie pilot team that adding 100 speed uh, to our to our team so Kind of an expensive counter, but I really wanted to get through the front wall without burning a single GL or really any of our uh, super tough teams either. So he had uh, this really good BAM team up here in the front and it's modded for 5v5 to beat Lord Vader. So IG is super fast and he's one speed faster than Queel. I don't think a differently modded uh, IG would have really changed the outcome of this battle though. BAM just really suffers in threes. He really needs a full team to be able to get up to 20 birds. If he can't get up to 20 birds, then it's they just don't do enough. Like we have a gear 12 soldier in there. It's yeah, it's not really that great. And I've, I've been talking with Zareth recently, too, about we need to be moving the speed off of Quill because it's just not doing anything on this team. Uh, so for our team as well, because I have a very fast Quill and it's just useless for three. So Hux might begin to see that in his near future. And then from here, we're just trying to basic it out and use our protection recovery just in case we can get back to full protection but that's it's really just not plausible we keep applying the tenacity down and the tenacity down generates dots onto our team that gets through our protection it's just a bummer so we get to his back wall and he has the four hardest teams in 3v3 in there he's got jmk he's got lord vader with maul he's got ray armor hoda and he's got star killer so i have slkr that can beat jmk or lord vader but I need something that is going to be able to beat this team. So this is this is really rough. So we took in C um, on a whim to see if this could win. I, I had seen that had had some good reports, um, and we don't go for the ult right now, just because killing Kenobi really doesn't get us anywhere. Uh, that being General Kenobi, we really need to kill Cat. So we take again a calculated risk, whatever you want to call it here. And we link up the other two in, but they have us, I mean, they have us dead in turn. So not to spoil anything, but that's the end of the match. Not being able to kill JMK in that back wall. We're not going to be able to full clear and it doesn't matter what the rest of the battle is. So I believe we looked up the reports and apparently GBA is actually really good with C and armor versus that, that specific comp. We didn't have GBA left, but even then, like you're going to see in these next couple battles, I'm going to spoil them that that one losing that one battle didn't decide the match the match uh there, there were just too many factors in the way that emo but both the way that i place my defense and the way that emo places defense 
and just the not having to rain star killer what that really did to us offensively so we're going to take a star killer watt here and i'm really not too afraid of this comp we took in watt so that he could have so number one he can give the shield tech out to slkr and then we also it's nice to have watt there because maul likes to kill him first because he's weaker so he burned all of that and from here we were pretty much just able to siphon accordingly and their their mall couldn't kill us because we went into ult right as it got us turn it was a it was only a one turn ult but it was worth it and now lord vader excuse me he's only able to take a negative mastery so he's really kind of hosed here he doesn't yeah um there's just not a lot he can do our our nine or not if he has less mastery that he even came into the battle with slkr has his number so it's cool to see that this counter is still consistent but this was this is where things were hard because i slkr was also my jmk counter so we definitely we made some pivotal mistakes i don't even think in gameplay execution but just in what we picked for our defense and what and really you know props to emo for picking uh the defense on the back wall that he did because this just put me in a position where i couldn't win uh if we Again, I, I I can't say that we would have won had this been different, but it, it would have helped if we had Star Killer to be able to mirror his. But I also assumes my Mario J would have to be faster, so it's a lot of assumptions. Um, and this battle, th this is just for science for fun. Uh, so Lord Vader struggles with Ray in threes, at least without Maul, at least without Maul. So I was like, what? I wonder what this team looks like if we take in, if we take in Lord uh, Darth Vader lead, so that the dots continually stick. We use Lord Vader obviously because we pretty much have no shot otherwise and then we use piet to mark lord vader so that when the whirlwinds do come around lord vader takes them just kind of an interesting idea that the the really big fatal flaw in this entire strategy is that piet and darth vader cannot take an ult with only three people standing that they're just not gonna do it um so the ult comes in, wipes the two of them out, and I mean that's that's really all she wrote. There's not there's nothing we're gonna be able to do because once Vader's gone, unfortunately, uh, part of his lead goes with him, which is kind of infuriating. Like his the fact that his dots can now go away once he's dead. I guess it might have been probably overpowered at the time when he was more relevant or his lead was more relevant at least. But yeah, I mean, that from here there's just nothing we could do. The the Hoda the Hoda buff gives a decent amount of offense, uh, and then yeah, Ray just wrecks us. Uh, this, yeah this wasn't gonna be a win so failed there um and then we again we're kind of on a science kick right now we're not really tilting but we, we know we've already lost the second we lost the um the witch call battle we were done i was really 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 hoping that mar jade would basic on her third turn would basic padme and give her under spell protection up so she wouldn't get stunned and then we would just flip everything instead they went for gideon and killed gideon which is pretty smart on the ice choice so good for them um and then this just failed hardcore and then i've, I've heard a few people talk about using genite revan here so we took in genite revan and it's not really even close i mean we are at a relicus advantage here like i think our our genite revan's r1 capital turns r5 jolie's r4 and they're like all r8 r7 but i don't i don't think that would change anything i don't think i don't think an r8 cow is gonna get is gonna be the win for me here um so yeah, we did that battle, and that was pretty much it. Like we just called a game after the air. I mean, we we as soon as Jam, as soon as we failed in the JMK, that was the entirety of the match. Uh, there wasn't really anything we could do beyond that. And I, again, this just comes down to again emo pl placing a very good defensive setup, and I mean using the tools that he had that we didn't. So props to emo. Uh, I, I don't mean to say the defense setup is like a cop-out. It's really not. That is a part of being a smart player. Is placing a good defense. And in reality, we could have done things better too. Like, had I pulled JML to offense and had I saved GBA on the front wall, we might have had a shot at... We would have been able to rearrange our teams to be able to take this out. But at the same time, I don't think that would have been a clear win for us. Because if we re remove JML from our defense to use him on offense to beat something... I'm going to guess this fail wouldn't have even happened if we would have even had a less of a buffer. So, again, congrats, Simo. Good win. Uh, win or lose, like I said before this even started, it was a pleasure to match up with you. Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. And if it does, I hope it's 5v5. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Uh, as always, remember to like and subscribe and stay awesome.